Okay, so next up we've got uh, Robert Gendron. You want to come up and uh, start away? Can we get started? Hey, yes, thanks. All right, super. So, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Robert Gendron. I'm from Vicor. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, 48 volts going uh, mainstream um, within the data centers, specifically our solution, which is um, 48 volt direct to CPU. Now, um, I know last year there was announcements of 48 volts at OCP. This year we've seen um, several new product announcements, uh, obviously many uh, conversations about 48 volts presentations. Um, for us at Vicor, we've had 48 volt solutions and supplying 48 volt solutions for over 10 years. So we welcome uh, the um, attention 40 volts is now getting within the OCP world and how it's being embraced. So it's a very interesting time for us. Um, we are actually on our fourth generation of product. So again, over that 10 years, we've been refining our product and I'll show you a little bit of even where we're going um, in the future with it, okay? So if you don't mind, yeah. next slide please. So I appreciate not everyone in the room uh, eats and sleeps power as we do at Vicor. Uh, so, uh, just to back up a little bit, um, give you a little uh, background where we are. So, what is the need for 48 volts within a data center? So, simply enough, right, you've, I'm sure you've heard already, right, rack power is increasing. Rack power is increasing because CPUs, GPUs, ASICs, those power demands are increasing, right? We've seen with our customer base where 100 amps was required a few years ago we're seeing now power requirements of 200 amps, 300 amps, 400 amps, okay? Not only is the power, power requirements increasing, but the power complexity is increasing. That is, uh, the transient performance of these devices is increasing. The voltage to supply to these uh, GPUs is decreasing. You'd think that would be easier, but it's actually much harder. So we are talking sub one volt delivery of 200, 300, 400 amps at very high speeds. So power complexity has dramatically increased. So all this, when you look at the conventional 12 volt type delivery, the, makes that the, the conventional 12 volt delivery can't keep up. It falls out of pace. It can't keep up in the power delivery requirements. It can't keep up with the efficiency needs going forward, okay? So if you go to the next slide, please. So this slide, and apologize, we're using PDFs, so we couldn't have things flying in and evaporating and all, but this slide uh, highlights both, at a high level, the benefits and the adoption delays of 48 volts. So the benefits of 48 volts, the primary one always talked about is, it's a 16x reduction in power loss over 12 volts. And simply enough, what that means is, is it's the distribution losses, or the I squared R, losses in the lines, in the cables, et cetera, okay? So those are distribution losses, okay? Now last year, uh, when Google made their announcement here at OCP, I think they cited a 30% savings overall in what they're doing, okay? So that included distribution losses, converter, uh, efficiency gains, et cetera, okay? Some of the other benefits of using 48 volts, it relieves the front end from converting down to 12 volts to converting to 48. It also helps in the energy storage as far as flexibility and options there. But talking about the adoption delays that I've listed here, you scroll up just a, a hair. So these are the delays, and I put in parentheses, they're historical. Because most of these now are gone. And now, now we start getting into the realm of the benefits of 48 volts and the operation of 48 volts, and now the specific implementation of Vicor's 48 volt direct to CPU, okay? Because again, as, as you will hear from different suppliers and such, this is where there starts to be differences in the actual implementation of a 48 volt a VR type solution. So again, the adoption delays of the past, cost, efficiency, size, so on. But I, I can tell you today, for the, co for the cost, efficiency, size, safety, reliability, and what I call the conventional comfort, you know, ease of design, everything else that goes on. At Vicor, our solution, we've either made those, those um, uh, concerns 
performance parameters either at par or we've exceeded that of the conventional 12 volt type design. Okay? So those delays are no longer in place for us. The last two, ironically, for customers to have the racks, multiple sources, et cetera, that's thanks to OCP. Right? So these delays, like I said, for us, we see as, as largely historical at this point. Okay. Go to the next slide. So the title of my presentation was, you know, 40 volts going mainstream. This is the one slide I think that embodies that the most. So as I mentioned, we've been doing 48 volts for 10 years. This is our heritage of where we've been and what we're working on even as we speak today. We have started with um, IBM processors making VR type solutions for what was the P6. And today we are actively working on P9 VR power designs. For Intel, we followed what was their VR specs, if you're not familiar, for their different platforms from VR12 starting about uh, six years ago, up to today, to VR13, and now their next generation of that. Not just CPUs, but we also work with various other types of ASICs, GPUs. Um, and again, I put um, kind of a basket representation up top to those. So with our solution, running at 48 volts, we're supplying various types of devices. Now this is only I should say only, but this is CPUs, GPUs, ASICs on here. There's also memory. There's also auxiliary rails on a server board. We're also supplying those. Okay? So we can make today a server board that runs truly at 48 volts for a CPU, for memory, for every auxiliary rail that exists. So now seeing, again, where we are and stuff, let me step back and compare us uh, to a 12-volt type solution. So when we talk 12 volts, using 12 volts, you get down to powering a CPU. Now you get into the archi power architecture of what does it mean to bring 12 volts to a CPU. So there is a, a power architecture called multi-phase power scheme, which is this right here. Okay? It has been a commoditized scheme used for many years now for GPUs, CPUs, et cetera, which basically takes a buck regulator in an IC form you see here, and a power inductor. And these devices are paralleled to make whatever power uh, delivery is needed for, again, a device. Okay? Again, works very, you know, it works well, 12 volts, it worked well for uh, smaller power processors. As you get to larger and larger or newer and newer CPUs, these number of stages keep adding and adding and adding to the point where, again, you really can't support that new CPU and such anymore. Now, ironically, this whole scheme was created around the whole idea of getting around the inefficiencies or the power storage or current storage that goes on within the inductor itself. Okay? Again, very good scheme, worked very well. It served its time. Now, if you scroll forward there. Now, this is in contrast to our specific, the Vicor 48 volt direct to CPU scheme. What you see right away, and I, again, I apologize, we've got bullets on here and, and some text, right away is next to the CPU, there's only one device. This one device provides the same amount of power as those six um, multi-phase buck regulators on the previous slide. So right away you can see there's density far exceeding that of a 12 volt type design. Now, purposely up top, it's not my poor uh, slide, uh, craftsmanship, there is a support device we call the PRM. And then uh, you know, the interface controller, be it SFID, PM bus, et cetera. It's purposely put up that way because it can sit quite remotely or at the board's edge compared to the VTM. So where the critical real estate is around the CPU itself, only this one device is needed. Okay. So, and I'll show you some pictures in a moment about uh, size comparisons and such. but. Uh, that addresses, as I mentioned, the board area consumption. Again, exceeding that at 12 volts. If you read some of these bullets here, you'll see that the efficiency, we can meet or surpass the efficiency of a 12 volt conversion. That is, from 12 to let's say one volt, we can beat that going 48 to one volt. 
So again, one of the historical concerns is, well, I'm going to pay the price. While I save in distribution losses, I'm going to pay the price in conversion inefficiency. No longer is the case. Now you're actually gaining in conversion efficiency in addition to the savings and distribution losses. Okay. So th several other aspects to the product that uh, again stands out, but the key one is is that we're providing higher efficiency, higher density, directly to the CPU, 48 volts. Okay. Now a little bit about the design. If you just slide forward one more slide. So in the design itself, like I said, it's not a traditional buck regulator that's just paralleled up, you know, keep throwing another, another soldier at the fight. It's a very different design. It is, instead of being multi-phase, it's what we would call single-phase type design. We bring in 48 volts into a pre-regulator stage. This stage does just that. It regulates the 48 volts. So if you think of a, of a CPU or GPU that needs the margining, if the device is going from 1 to 1.1 or 1.8 to 1.7, whatever margining goes on, that's actually performed by the PRM. So this regulated bus here is a reflection of the margin voltage required at the output. So regulation is performed here and here only. That regulated voltage gets transferred over to the VTM. The VTM performs what we call voltage transformation. Knocks the voltage down multiplies the current, okay? It does not regulate. Whatever it sees here provides the transformation, thus providing either 1.8 for memory, 1.2, uh, one volt, sub one volt uh, supply to again, whatever the load is. It's a very simple, very clean design. It is not a multi-phase design. The loop is not constantly changing based on phases turning on and off, et cetera, okay? Just scroll to the next one. So here's an implementation of the design itself. You see the uh, VTM, as I mentioned, can be cl placed close to the socket. This is our uh, PRM, the pre-regulator stage, uh, power inductor next to it. This is uh, uh, some discretes and support, and then the SVID or PM bus controller that you would have on a board, okay? If you scroll down, there's like secret information embedded at the bottom of the page. There we go. Uh, so compared to a conventional six-phase buck, uh, we measured that to be four and a half inches in area, board area consumption. Our solution, 1.75 inches. So again, we've reduced that critical space around the board by 60%. Now, that embodies the whole design. If you jump to the next slide, as a reminder, is only the VTM needs to be near the load. All of this can be placed far away on the edge of the board. Okay. Sorry? This would be, for example, uh, this would support like a 165 watt skew. So again, what we're talking about is not just the, gaining the benefits of 48 volts, but gaining the benefits of a new architecture over what was traditionally used, being a multi-phase or 12-volt multi-phase type uh, scheme. If you would please so much to the next. So some examples of products that are out there are being released soon. So we win right here at the show. Uh, they announced uh, yesterday um, an OCS uh, compliant uh, blade. If you look, uh, you can look right in their booth and you'll see the implementation exactly what I just showed. Um, our 48 direct to the point of load solution for CPU, for memory, uh, even for some of the auxiliary rails. Okay. Another example, if you scroll forward, Inventec. Uh, they just recently did a, a, a P, IBM P9 processor design. So in this case, P9 processor, uh, I believe the load is of over 300 amps. So it required using three of our VTMs here in parallel, uh, supplying the load, and again, behind that, our PRM device uh, sitting over here. Another advantage of this, oh, no, scroll back. Mike, was I boring you on that slide? Okay, sorry. Uh, if, you, if you look at the, the design, I mean, let's 
take also a moment to recognize that these are easily mountable surface mount devices. Um, again, everything is treated like a simple IC, although this is again creating over 300 watts of power. Okay. And you go. One last example I had in here. This is from a Japanese uh, supercomputer company. Uh, the name of the company is Pezzi, which we conveniently cut off the top. But uh, in this design, it was about a 200 plus amp design. Uh, again, sub one volt. So that required two of our VTMs you see here. Again, the PRM and such uh, sits above. Okay. So real designs using real products. Actually, like I said, coming up on the fourth generation of product uh, with over 10 years of innovation in these devices. Okay. You, no, no, I'll scroll, I have two, three more, is that okay? Did, did you cut me off time-wise? No, no, you got, you got still another oh, 10 minutes. Oh, okay, so, are I still boring you there? No, sorry, okay, so uh, a few other quick aspects. So, noise in a system. As we've deployed these systems over the years, customers would come back and say, wow, the noise of that VTM is super quiet. In fact, Intel at APEC last year actually did a study. And these are not thermal plots, if you're familiar with the colors and like. This is actually uh, measured radiated noise. So on the left here is that conventional 12-volt scheme, six drivers or, or, or multi-phase bucks sitting across the top horizontally. On the right, our VTM sitting, it's very hard to see because it's in the blue body, right up towards the top center there, okay? So blue represents quiet, peacefulness. The red is, you know, it's loud, it's switching, it's creating noise, it's creating havoc, right? So again, the picture says it all, right? Multiphase is noisy, right? The VTM is a dead quiet device. So this further adds to, to density on the board. Not only does, is the part smaller than the conventional type design, but now for routing, you can take signal lines, move it closer to the VTM, move it under the VTM, okay? If you scroll ahead. Okay, so moving forward. So um, we've progressed in designs where now today we offer different levels of integration of what we call our PRM VTM. We have, again, as I mentioned, you've stepped top, this is one I just really kind of showed, but we uh, have options now where we can integrate the inductor into the PRM. We can even take the uh, controller, the SVID controller, and integrate that in the P, uh, PRM. So we can provide to customers a two-chip type solution. Okay, very easy layout, extremely high density. Okay, now the last one is the interesting one. If you scroll up just a hair, so. The last one is what we call power on package. And that is taking that VTM, which I told you is high density, low noise, high efficiency, and moving it in with the CPU. So taking it off the motherboard, putting it in with the CPU. So why would you do that? Well, if you scroll forward, in every VR design that goes on, the majority of design is focused on one aspect of a server board, and that is what's called the last inch, okay? So that last inch in design is the most critical aspect of the design. This could be our device, our VTM here. This could be a conventional VR type design. It could be any sort of VR. But the last inch of traveling, taking high current, low voltage, going through the PCB and going up through this package is what every designer is focused on and spending the majority of time. It is what increases the board cost of every server board because you're running planes of two ounce plus copper in multiple planes to again reduce this resistance, reduce this impedance as low as possible, okay? In the, the package here, um, vendors are, are, are uh, consuming or dedicating a quarter to a third of their pins for power delivery up to the package, okay? So we've eliminated this last inch by taking, in essence, the VR, or specifically the VTM, and moving that in with the CPU, okay? And I think if you scroll ahead one. So by doing this, 
like I said, we can eliminate the impedance contributions. We can eliminate further about 15% of power loss that goes on, okay? We can give back 99% of the package pins on the device. So CPU has 4,000 pins, 800 are dedicated to power. We can give back over 780 pins. Okay. We're only providing very low current, high voltage up to the, uh, uh, the package itself. Okay. So our design has primarily stayed the same as far as this PRM, VTM type concept. But to, as, as I've said throughout the years now, we've refined it where we can take it to finally of actually bringing on the package, eliminating that last inch. And if you go, I think I just had one last one to show. Yeah. So hopefully I conveyed in the short amount of time we had here is that, again, 48 volts is being used today, right? It's required given the processors that we see out there right now, okay? The, the 48 volt conversion, the great news about 48 volt conversion is it abandons the conventional architecture of multi-phase, right? I think you'll hear this afternoon, there's, there's other architectural solutions also. But what I know for sure is the one that we have has many advantages over, again, that traditional 12-volt conventional multiphase. Okay? And specifically, we can beat that 12-volt multiphase over efficiency, density, and cost. And with what we're doing next of actually showing it on package, we can reduce, like I said, that last inch. And, and it truly accelerate uh, time to market. Okay. All right. Okay, so we have uh, three minutes. Uh, questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, you own that. <laughs> yes. So, um, so I'm just curious on the explanation of what, what, what you felt got you through that, not all the where we are today. And then my, my more realistic question is um, in, in comparison to a, a multi phase solution. Yep. Um, and you mentioned that you have uh, efficiency meeting or exceeding that of your solution versus multi phase. Yes. So I'm curious is that just peak efficiency or is that across the load curve, and, you know, particularly in the, the light load end? Right. Of, uh, you know, uh, what, like base count or DCM, whatever you want to call it, to optimize efficiency for the light load. Okay. So, uh, all right, so two part question. First part on cost. Uh, so, on cost, the VTM that we have is a three dimensional package part. I say it's a truly a three dimensional part because we place components both on the north side, south side of a PCB over mold the package. Now, we can make that on an assembly line, right? And we can make tons of them very quickly. And we can scale that very easily because the, the, the way we actually make the individual 3D parts or 3D package parts is we make them on a larger panel, right? We dice this panel. This is a major change from us because a few years ago, we were not focused on a panel type assembly process. We had a different assembly, different package type process. So now with this new packaging, this scales very easily for us. So this is how we're addressing costs. We're treating it much like a, we look much like a wafer house now. We're focused on wafer cost or panel cost, right? Which is driving down the cost of actually all of our products because we, we're driving everything on a common wafer, even though it's, it's an over-molded uh, panel, okay? So, so hopefully I succeeded on, on your first part. On the second one, on efficiency. So efficiency, yes. So it depends on the, the, the output load. So, you know, I have, it's not going to be a black and white answer. I apologize for that. So, uh, depending on the, the, the load, you know, 1.8, 1 volt, 0.8 volts, and on the load condition, yes, we can beat on peak, we can beat on full load, we can beat on light load, but not in all cases, right? Because it is a curve, and so the curves, you know, some, some will have advantages over others. Light load is a challenge, 
right? Because in a multi-phase, right, you can just boom, 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 shut everything down, right? But we've made advances in light load, actually, where we're at the point now that we can, we can be very close to, let's say, that single phase in a heartbeat type mode. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.